and uh, here it is. It is September the 24th, 2012. This is Thomas Keegan uh, with LibertarianProgressive.com, um, where we interview independents and third-party candidates that will be on the ballot this November 6th, 2012. Um, so if you really want to make a difference, change the world, perhaps um, occupy the Congress, um, throw out the uh, incumbents like tea on the Boston Harbor, then uh, this is uh, your chance this year um, because there's going to be a lot of people on the ballot. And we're talking to someone right now, um, Eileen Fleming, who's running for the uh, fifth district in Florida um, for the U.S. House of Representatives against uh, Corrine Brown, the incumbent, um, the Democrats who, um, you know, voted for the National Defense Authorization Act that, uh, you know, lets um, the government um, indefinitely detain people without due process, basically lawlessness. Um, and then Leanne Kolb, who decided to run on the Republican tickets. I guess she thought, you know, the Republicans are doing a really good job, so she want to be a Republican, or I say that in jest, so I, I mean, I don't, maybe she's disappointed with them, but, and then there's Bruce Riggs right in. So Eileen Fleming is the, um, alternative candidate that is on the ballot this year and uh, it, she is uh, an independent um, no party affiliation and so Eileen it's a pleasure thank you for taking the time to um, you know allow this interview today so we could know more of the uh, options more information have more of the facts so we can make a more informed decision and if you could please tell us about yourself um, what got you motivated to be in this um, uh, race this year and also uh, you know, a little bit about District 5 in Florida for those who might not have ever uh, visited. Okay, thank you so much, and what a great intro. Um, basically, what got me motivated was, uh, well, let's say before 9-11, I was apolitical. 9-11 woke me up. I never went back to sleep. I wanted to understand why did a few people in the world, and it was a few people in the world at that time, hate us so much. Uh, that such a thing could happen, and I was also uh, really in the midst of a spiritual journey. I was in a formation program that was uh, affiliated with the Methodist and Episcopal Church, and uh, really, my uh, I'm, I'm a nurse by education, a writer by vocation, and after 9-11, I wanted to understand it rang very hollow that anybody would hate us for our freedoms uh, to do such a thing. And I, because my faith is in the nonviolent Jesus who promised it is the peacemakers who are the children of God, I wanted to do something positive. I got involved with an interfaith nonprofit, Olive Trees Foundation for Peace. One thing led to another. I started to learn the Palestinian narrative. Uh, a 1948 refugee a Muslim man from the Galilee made his way to the USA. Uh, when Israel became a state, he had to flee for his life with his small little family and uh, put himself through university, uh, achieves a uh, top secret clearance a uh, position in engineering in the defense industry during the Cold War. 9-11 uh, happens. He brings together Jews, Christians, Muslims to do something positive, raise awareness, and help funds to replace the over one million trees that Israel's wall has destroyed. And Israel's wall costs we, the taxpayers, over uh, three, uh, it's like 2.7 million, and this is like 1998 dollars uh, that we were paying to erect this wall, and wherever it does not follow the green line, it is illegal, which is in most places. It's been deemed illegal by the International Court of Justice, and uh, going over there and seeing with my eyes the other side of that wall that yet you don't see if you just go to Israel, such as where our Congress takes these APAC trips. They go to Israel, they go to Tel Aviv and Haifa and uh, West Jerusalem. They never see anything, but uh, you know, you walk an hour from uh, West Jerusalem to Bethlehem, the little town of Bethlehem, occupied territory, and it blows your mind. And uh, I came back from my first trip in 2005 on fire. I uh, couldn't believe what the media wasn't reporting and what my government didn't want us to know and uh, founded my internet newspaper, wearewideawake.org. Uh, I've written three books on topic, over a thousand articles. 
So foreign policy, I am an open book. Why I am running for District 5 is one big reason, is trying to raise awareness that we, it's not the Democrats or the Republicans that are going to get us out of this mess, it's because they're the ones who got us into it. What we need is we the people to quit complaining and run ourselves and take over the House because all our founding fathers required is that you be at least at the time of your inauguration uh, 25 years old, a citizen for seven years, and live in the state your district resides. Well, that's a lot of people. Um, so I'm trying to raise awareness there. I'm an internet-only candidate. I can't compete with the money. I'm not. I'm not doing robot calls. I'm not print, printing signs. I'm not doing any of that. It's all just uh, writing, internet writing, and getting my message. I feel like if I can just get my message out about foreign policy and how it's all come together here, uh, finally we're talking about foreign policy here. And uh, I want us to talk honestly about Israel's nuclear weapons. I want us to talk honestly about why uh, people in the world uh, do not trust us to be honest brokers is because of our total alliance to Israel and uh, shielding them um, in the UN for war crimes and uh, humanitarian abuses. And uh, so I, 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 let's say I have an attraction to uh, third rail issues. Great, great. Um, well, those third rails, um, like, are all part of the, um, the, you know, the first and second and fourth rails and so on as well. And, um, and, um, and I guess, and Israel, right? And um, yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> there, there is, I mean, so that would, you know, if there was peace there, I mean, no wow. doubt that would, um, oh, that so would fun. be a great thing for the whole world, uh, basically. That is exactly yeah. it. And in, in fact, that was a quote that I got, and it begins my uh, Eileen Fleming for House, EileenFleming.org. The peace of the world begins in Jerusalem. This was a quote by uh, a reverend, uh, Hesburgh, um, and when I heard this quote, it was, I've been uh, seven times since 2005, investigative journalist, you know, reporting on, uh, and in support of non-violent Palestinians, Israelis, and internationals who want to end the military occupation, it's 45 years now, and want equal human rights. Well, over, and it's also, the like, the people that um, would be accused war criminals. It's not the state of Israel. Um, obviously, you wouldn't judge a whole group. It would be just be certain individuals, right? Um, well, and, yes, and we just had a, yeah. a very uh, heartbreaking case here with the um, Rachel Corey. Um, uh, just a couple of days before, uh, you know, America started bombing um, Iraq, Rachel Corey, young um, American, I say she was the first uh, citizen journalist here. Uh, the, you know, I, I say we're, we're members of the New Fourth Estate, you know, we internet reporters. And she went over there to Gaza and became part of the International Solidarity Movement, and they, they nonviolently stand up to the bulldozers when they come to destroy the Palestinian homes, and it was a home of a, a pharmacist with five kids, and it, the bulldozer, Caterpillar, U.S.-made Caterpillar bulldozer ran over her, ran back and forth over her, she died. And just now with the family... Well, after that, that shouldn't happen. I mean, no one should be run over by a bulldozer exactly. and people's houses shouldn't be... You know, you would think someone would at least compensate them for it or whatever, but... Well, no, that the, and, and the, the family least, has been... It's all yeah. these years. How many years has this been going on? Nine years? I, and uh, the family just all through the courts and uh, the, the Israeli justice system exonerates uh, the Israeli army. No. And uh, they, they're... they're yeah. Their justice system is not like they're not like ours. Well, Eileen, like now, I, I do want to say for folks that are listening, there are like your your at your actual website actually lists more domestic issues than anything else. Yes, and we're we have gonna, a huge. We'll, we'll, well, we'll save that for last. But I, I mean, so I I do want to kind of explore this Israel issue just for a little bit um, because. Um, 
because it also goes to a, a, a way of uh, showing like um, how you, you know solving problems basically and and the way our Congress decides to solve problems is they think they're the answer even though they've like you said they're the ones and I agree that they're the ones who started these problems so they wouldn't be the ones that would be able to fix them the same way the people who got like all the, the the bailouts in 2008, um, th they weren't the ones who could uh, solve it either. They're the ones who got in the, the mm -hmm. who who needed the bailouts. Yet, they're the ones who got bailed out. It should have been small and mid-sized banks that bought up these bigger banks, and then we would have had some new blood in there, and um, you know some fresh new people. Just like we need fresh new people in Congress, we we we, we repress competition, so that hurts the morale, and it also hurts practically the people who didn't need the bailouts. There's plenty of small mid-sized banks out there that didn't need the bailouts and um but the ones that totally failed made all the wrong decisions were gambling um they're the ones who got bailed out so we you know rewarded um failure i mean literally speaking we really rewarded failure that's like you know that would be like you, you know watering your plant with motor oil or something and, and thinking it's a good idea but but as far as israel goes like the way i see this eileen is like there's people have to look at what kind of solution they want first because their actions are leading to either indecision or the kind of solution they want and it might not be the same solution I mean the the, the way things are going now is the only thing that I can see that it will give if the policies remain this the, the type of policy right now is either indecision which is very normal I mean it could very well be indecision because there's a lot of changes of administrations and, and there's a lot of different parties working things out but in the long run if things go the way they are I mean you, you know it, it, it to me I see this like in a 200 year picture like in 200 years I mean you know the, the Palestinians will just slowly be you, you, you know um, just kind of they'll just kind of die out and uh, you know become a desert town and be just pushed a little bit over the span of about 200 years till you know the borders are you know kind of more like biblical borders um, but but, um, you know, there. so if, if, if that's what we want um, to do it in, in a period of over 200, 300 years, I mean, we're kind of doing that right now, um, or just um, or just an all-out war um, eventually mm -hmm. happening. Um, I mean, something's got to give. Now, if we... Something, it, ha it has got to give, and if we, wanted we, peace, have to change, we have to change yeah. our policy. And, and I quote to you, uh, Jonathan Ben Ark D, who is the nephew of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he said, sometimes it takes a good friend to tell you when enough is enough. As they did with South Africa two decades ago, concerned citizens across the U.S. can make a difference by encouraging Washington to get the message to Israel that this cannot continue. He's referring to the military occupation of Palestine. If Americans truly are our friends, they should shake us up and take away the keys because right now we are driving drunk and without this wake-up call, we will soon find ourselves in the ditch of an undemocratic, doomed state. And uh, Jonathan went to jail uh, for 18 months as a conscientious objector because he would not serve in the Israeli uh, forces in the occupied territories. And what we've got is a lot of misconceptions about pa Palestine, and we've got a lot of bad religion uh, that's gotten mixed up into it, and there's absolutely nothing Christian about Zionism, but uh, Joe Biden thinks there is, and Mitt Romney doesn't have a clue um, as, to, uh, as to anything uh, Palestinian. I mean, and uh, on July 30th, I wrote a message to Mitt, courtesy of CIA, FBI, BB's nephew, and a candidate for U.S. House. So it's still on the homepage of wearewideawake.org, and uh, U.S. national security officials consider Israel to be a genuine counterintelligence threat. We've been warned um, and on page 147 of the 9-11 uh, Commission uh, report. Uh, Kevad Sheikh Mohammed uh, told us that, you know, his uh, involvement in 9-11 is because of our policy, uh, you know, aligned with Israel. Um, and w what's at the root of the Arab Spring and all this uprising always comes, takes us back to the Palestinian issue and I say where we really, Americans really need to come back and understand is uh, June 8, 1967, the USS Liberty, when Israel attacked 
and um, our spy ship while it navigated in international waters during the Six Day War. They murdered 34 uh, Americans, wounded 171. Uh, this has never been openly investigated. It's been covered up and whitewashed. Well, I, I've seen a documentary on that, the USS Liberty, right? Yes. Um, and that was in the Gulf th region there. And uh, and that was, yeah, an American ship that was um, uh, falsely identified as being an enemy by Israel and then, uh, you know, is attacked. Um, and, um, and and then, you know, but it was kind of covered up because of national relations. And um, But well, it's this never... Is what LBJ but, said but he didn't still, want to yeah. embarrass an ally, but he also was well, well aware that Israel was a nuclear power. And a big reason I'm also uh, very uh, on um, target here about the Israeli-Palestinian issue is because we never never talk about Israel's nuclear weapons, nor do we talk about the man And there who could be lots of other interests, too. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you, you know, the military-industrial complex, like, um, profits off, like, um, this sure. kind of, uh, y y you know, this fear of going sure. to war constantly. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of industries that are making money. Um, right. uh, this day and age, you could also possibly argue that Israel doesn't need quite the map that it did, like, in biblical days, because with the technology, you know, you can almost farm anywhere and 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 do and, and live like in more you know natural places but I mean they I would argue I, I don't agree with all the beliefs there's so many different factions but but regardless we all have you know we're supposed to have well at least in the United States we have the First Amendment that that wouldn't be I, I don't I wouldn't preach this with a barrel of a gun but I would just suggest we all should have the First Amendment and um, and free will and um, so you know people have a right to keep their heritage and um, whatever they claim that to be. And, uh, you, you know, so they have that right. I mean, so they have a right to um, do that. Uh, the Palestinians have a right. I mean, if we were truly working for peace, um, you know, what kind of actions do you think we would be actually taking now this, instead of the ones we are? This is what we, we would are. be doing. If we were actually working for peace, the state of Israel, the, the very establishment of the state of Israel was contingent upon Israel upholding the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights rights. America is a member state, and I believe there are 58 other member states. Every single one of them is obligated to hold all member states accountable to it. And um, it's a beautiful document. It's based on the wisdom of uh, all the world's uh, faith paths. And uh, if we all just honored it, uh, it would be a wonderful world. And I, it, it's on wearewideawake.org, uh, down on the right margin, and also at Eileen Fleming, uh, Dot org. Just scroll down there because that's one of the things that uh, is paramount in, in my uh, platform. Yeah, just seeing hold us accountable to people as equals, document. having equal justice, like seeing everyone as an individual that's instead right. of groups, I think is the yes. issue to a lot of our problems in the U.S., in the world, um, Israel, um, and probably lots of everywhere where there's people. And, and maybe also, you know, more joint activities like, you know, maybe having an Israeli citizen and a Palestinian citizen, like, um, you know, in the space program, maybe going to the moon together or, or something, I don't know. I mean, we, we, you know, seeing them, and then everyone would see them on the news and stuff. And, I mean, because then we'd also realize what a small place this is, and, um, and, and we're, it's something, I mean, either we want this constant, um, you, you know, preparation where there could be a war at any time, or we want peace. I mean, let's um, either have at it, or let's just do something more rational and um, I, I'm not suggesting that we do the first one, but um, I mean, honesty should be the best policy. It's eventually going to win out. I the think the truth will set us free, and yeah. and that's what and that's that's what it's all about. And uh, that's another reason. Um, um, and that's very biblical too. I, I mean, you know, so I mean, that's one of the things we should we shouldn't lie, and um, and, and and it's just also practical. Um, also, I mean, there's the, the truth is always. Um, it's always much better in the long run. If we have flaws or if we don't know the answers, we can say we don't know and we can um, fix those flaws and, and you know, just uh, admit them and, um, and then just be stronger for it. And if other people can't accept that, then that's their problem, you know. Um, and uh, so, I mean, so I guess, um, you, you know, that's... Um, uh, it's, I mean, if in another biblical thing I was thinking about, which is kind of um, 
might, you know, a lot, there is a, you know, people just aren't acting wise. Um, you know, who is the wisest person that was in the Bible? I mean, maybe they could take some cues from that person. Um, Thank and you so much for bringing that out because on my website, wearewideawake.org, I have uh, under the banner, A Greater Awakening. And um, holy wisdom is something I've written about, um, but people, it's a greater awakening link, and I tell you to begin here, and where you begin is the Jefferson Bible, which is a rational Christianity. Um, and did you know that up until like the 1950s, and I can't remember when it began, but up until the 1950s, every senator who was sworn in was given a copy of Jefferson's Bible, and for those who, who don't know, Jefferson spent, I think it was something like 12 years cutting why well, yeah I heard about he, it, it's he amazing yeah. it, it truly is amazing and here's our founding father and he's been you know demonized as you know I don't uh, agree with him for doing that because especially in revelations it says do not alter one word but I mean I don't do, do not add it's right, right. do not add and, and okay. yet you've got all these uh, but, but I, I agree with his right to do it and, and I think he's a rational person I'm not saying that people shouldn't like there are things I've definitely question as well and I don't know it all and I know I don't know it all and I know I, I know I mean what if possibly God wants you to question him you, you know God is uh, you know who knows who knows but um, so that's a whole different arena but I know a lot of people are sensitive to, to, to certain things and um, but um, I mean Jefferson also said that um, you know democracy demands an educated and an informed electorate and um, that's right you know what Edward R. Murrow said as television got into uh, programs of uh, entertainment and neglected programs of enlightenment, it would lead to a dumbed down republic. And that's what we've got. We've got people who don't read P Jefferson, who don't read, you know, what our founding fathers were reading. Really if, if they were, about. if there was a bill introduced to the House and it was exactly the Constitution itself, I mean, which most of these people probably haven't even read, so they probably wouldn't recognize it, mm -hmm. they would probably vote against it. I mean, yeah. they would probably say, oh, wow, this is some crazy <laughs> stuff. Like, who's, like, this introducing this, Ron Paul or Dennis Kucinich or someone like that? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to vote against it. Well, isn't that what a democracy should be? All ideas come out, and we discuss it. And uh, I heard a great thing a woman said, because I just came back from uh, – it was the Campaign for Liberty um, conference, and a woman said she, because they were all talking about fighting, and, you know, everybody's fighting, we're all fighting, and she said, you know, she wants to fight to unite. This is supposed to be the United States, and I thought, yes, that's right, and we have to start listening to each other. We're openly, with open minds, open hearts, and accept what we can and will, and uh, yeah, I think it's great when we can change our minds about things, and because that's when we grow, and I think that's what God wants, just to, to grow to uh, be who we're supposed to be. Yeah, you know? and I know some people listening might not even believe in God, and, and so, you know, I, I respect that right, too. I respect the right to question sure. e everything, and um, so, yeah. but let's get to some um, issues here, um, and um, so I see number one on there is, um, well, some more issues, I should say, uh, health care. Um, um, so let's, you know, just real quick, what's your, um, y you know, your summary on health care? Well, I certainly have not read the 2,700 pages of what is referred to as Obamacare and with the, 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 all... Yeah, all, the Obama and Romney care. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I, I'm, I'm a nurse by education. My husband is an internist geri geriatrician, old people's doctor, and my folks both suffer from Alzheimer. So what I know going from right here, from just from personal, that, and from what my husband says, that unless medical science can discover a vaccination to prevent Alzheimer's, our growing population of elderly people alone will bankrupt this country within a generation. So we really have got to talk seriously about what's going on here and when Medicare um, you know was passed uh, the uh, age uh, life expectancy was 69 and now we're 85 89 and it's going to get more and more and more and pay and people are uh, you know they retire you know 20 years but like they're 
you know, in their 50s, well, my goodness gracious, you know, you're still productive and doing stuff. So I think we just need to get a new mindset about well, the way Well, maybe it prevention was. as well. And, um, Pardon? Pr maybe some prevention, preventive. Oh, you care. bet. Uh, preventive medicine is, is huge because, you know, I mean, and I come down pretty hard on couch potatoes, um, you know, in these kids, because I grew up before, you know, as a kid, you know, I'm, I was born in 1954. Okay, so we had no cell phones. You played outside all day. Nobody worried about you. It was a great time to be a kid. Yeah, no, no, not a lot, like, a lot of toxins and, the, and the, yeah, you know, no Fukushima dumping. No you were, you were physically oil active. Oils. You were yeah. physically active, but but you know, and they don't have that nowadays. And they they've all got great great thumbs because you know that's what they do. They do all that those things, you know. But but their bodies are you know it's horrible. You know we were an obese nation and and the the you know but it's personal responsibility. You know you can't force people to eat right or do do the right things, but you can certainly set an example and encourage it. I grew up with. JFK, you had, uh, we had physical education every day, uh, recess every day in school, and, uh, you know, you had to do, you know, climb a rope and sit-ups and all this kind of stuff. I don't think they have that anymore, but we have a huge population of retired people. Surely they could give an hour a week in, in the school and, and do some kind of physical education, volunteer, and I think we could do a whole lot, the community, and that's what I want to build, community, because... I lived in, I moved to Lake County in 1998, and at that time, it was District 5, my home. My home has not moved. I'm in the same home. But now, they've gerrymandered with two new districts, so my voting district now is District 10. I can't even vote for myself because I stuck with District 5. want to make a point that, you know, you don't even have to live you know, in your district, just in the state, because the whole, I mean, every Floridian's uh, welfare is dependent on uh, on every other. Yeah, and, yeah, that's you know, absolutely so it, it, true. It's bigger, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm in Orlando more than... Hey, even if you're in Wisconsin and, um, and, 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 and you like these views, I mean, you should participate. Of course, you can only vote in, in the district, but, I mean, you're going to affect um, issues that will affect the entire United States. Um, and uh, so it, it doesn't matter what district that, that you're in. I mean, I don't have, like, an independent or third-party candidate in my district to vote for. So... Um, well, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get enough t attention here for people to start thinking, hey... I can I can write in somebody. Maybe you know there's this person, and you know write in somebody. I don't know what the the rules are, but it's possible that you know people could write in if you don't like. Well, there are about um, like seventy percent of all districts that do have um, alternative candidates, and and we're doing interviews with fifty people um, as an example of of who's out there, um, who's more competent, um, and uh, than Republicans and Democrats, and and um, so most places do, um, act, act, but. Um, so there are plenty of choices, and imagine, you know, like let's say we could get 50-plus independent and third-party candidates. So this has to be a national uh, movement to make a big impact. But even if we just get one or two, I mean, that's going to be a strong voice. Um, and, start and somewhere. Who knows in 2014. But out of 535, um, we're hoping or trying to get this idea that maybe we can get 50 people to the Congress. And now, do you think people should ha be forced to mandate to buy um, uh, health insurance from no. an insurance company? No, I don't know. No, I don't like any of these things that the, the, this thing the government forces. Well, let me I just ask you some, like, anything. just ju just ah. rapid questions. I mean, so that's, that's sure. good. And uh, what about should people be forced to get a vaccination? Nobody should be forced to do anything that goes yeah. against their conscience. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. Self-responsibility, personal responsibility. We take the consequences. Do we decide to do this? Do we decide to not to do this? Not Big Brother. You know, and, and um, you know, that Jimmy Vaughn um, down with Big Brother, um, I got that on video, and that to me is very encouraging because that's what it's about. It's the Big Brother. It's this corporate media industrial industrial, congressional, security surveillance complex we're up against, not we the people. Oh, the government has its eyes on us. I mean, wherever oh, you see that security. tell me about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, like the eye at the top yeah. of the pyramid on our dog. It's just constantly staring at us, whether it's like security cameras. They're, they're getting more private. Like, we can't even, like, they're 
uh, you know, blacking out a lot of freedom of information requests, and I know a lot of people think that's because of security, but we're more secure. Oh, that, that's the blanket that. reason for any injustice But at the same the time security. that that's they're getting more yeah. private, they're invading our privacy right. more and more. I mean, everything. That's um, it. We have no freedoms unless we seize them, and that's 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 the bottom line. You know, it is our right to alter or abolish any government when it's no longer representative of us. It's 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 yeah. our right. Uh, that's in the Declaration of Independence. And yes, I do know how uh, the government um, monitors because when I put my little internet newspaper. Up in uh, 2005, we were wideawake.org. Since then, it's had over 8 million visitors. But these are not human people. This is cyber drones. American government, Israeli government, they're cyber drones. They monitor me. Um, and that's another reason I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives, because I want to be in their face. I just don't want them to monitor me. I want to talk to them. Oh, they should be monitored. And, and, yeah, you're the one who's supposed to put oversight. How can we, as a citizenry, I mean, again, that Thomas Jefferson quote um, of uh, d democracy demands an educated and informed electorate. If, and if we're getting vigilance. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 if, and if we don't have an educated and an informed electorate, I mean, what is that? That's going to end up having people who ha don't have our interests in mind That's being in right. charge and they're going to they're going to be um, you know kind of like the blind leading the blind or they're going to keep us blind and if we're blind and don't have all the information to make all the facts the the true choices and we're just told like oh you know just be quiet this is for your own security then we're not going to get anywhere. We're just going to lose our freedoms. Um, and, well, that's what Bush went on TV two days after 9-11 and says, if you want to help, go shopping. You know, let, we'll take care of it. Get you know, I like, don't think. Just con continue to consume and don't think because that's the last thing that they want is for you to dissent. You know, they want to keep you busy with all this mindless, you know, nonsense because when you start thinking and dissenting, then that, that's, that's a healthy democracy when, when the uh, politicians are afraid of the people. So, I mean, you believe that, like, um, search warrants should have, um, like, the approval of an um, independent um, uh, judge th um, and uh, instead of just, uh, y you know, FBI agents being able to write their own search warrants? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think, we're, you know, we're losing all our civil liberties. They're just disappearing because people are not even cognizant of what's going on. And uh, the, the, less we, the less we are, the better they like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's horrific. Just the Patriot Act, just for that alone. So people should be able to know the charges against them, yeah. who is charging them, um, the evidence, they should be able to have a fair trial with the jury of their peers and, um, y you know, a speedy trial. Do you agree with that? Of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. And, and then the First Amendment um, and, and et cetera. Um, and uh, so those, there are huge civil liberty issues going on right now in this country. Um, and uh, and uh, so, I, I mean, don't vote. Um, that's, you don't vote means um, don't vote for the Republicans or the Democrats. They're just constantly, like um, your, um, uh, one of your uh, competitors um, is, uh, the, the Democrat, um, she uh, voted for the NDAA, um, Corrine Brown, and um, and that's very unfortunate. She, I, I, to me, if there's any litmus test, it's it's like if any representative of mine would allow me or any of uh, anyone in my district or, or whatever to be indefinitely detained yeah. um, without any charges um, or anything, just secretly, then uh, that has to be. I mean, that's a step right into um, fascism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And what about yeah. the um, the drug war? Do you think? Uh, oh, I'm totally with Ron Paul on that. I, I say not, not, probably not as as radical as he is, but definitely legalize cannabis because this is a state's right issue. And if I am elected, um, among the House resolutions I will write is a compassionate cannabis bill because we've got all these uh, veterans returning. All, you know, all tw over 20% have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. They're, they're committing suicide, you know, at horrific rates. And um, medical science tells us that the veterans who do have access to medical marijuana uh, for post-traumatic stress disorder report a higher quality of life than those on synthetic. Well, let me ask you this um, um, related question then. Like, um, here's the bottom line for anyone who's wondering what way they should go on this. 
Do you think someone that um, committed right now is currently a victimless crime where they don't hurt anyone else, they don't hurt anyone at all, they just um, smoke a joint? Um, do you think um, that person should spend any time, even a second, inside a prison cell no, for doing that? I, no, I think it's total waste of... of uh, it's a, no, definitely not. And this is, this is what I tell all the Bible thumpers. Um, in Genesis, God created all seed-bearing plants and said they were good. And, but you know who's against the legal, legalization of cannabis, of course, is Big Pharma and the uh, liquor yeah, lobby. But, I mean, so if, I mean, I, I think most people would agree with the statement I just said. They, I don't think they think about it in that way. I mean, if they agree with that premise of, like, even if they like it or not, they might not like it. But if they don't think someone should spend time in prison for yeah. just smoking a joint, then, then really, where can we go with this? I mean, then it's this whole thing is just a big waste of time. Let's of just it cut is. it out. It's it's a huge waste of time and money and energy and manpower. Lives and, and, and families you know, and I, that are split up now because, they're, you know, uh, parents that are in jail or husbands exactly, and wives. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We have a huge homeless population in Florida. It's huge. And, you know, the Republicans had their big uh, convention there in Tampa. Tampa's got the highest population of homelessness. Well, they should have just donated they, all that money to Habitat exactly. for Humanity. Exactly. Did they even make a mention of it, I wonder? Did they even notice? Did they have any idea? Yeah. Um, you know, that would have been, uh, Romney would be up in the polls if he did that. If he said, you know what, I'm just going to have a small convention where I pay for it, and we're going to donate, like, you know, right. the, 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 the millions yeah. of dollars to Habitat for Humanity. Right. He would have gotten so much media um, attention for that. Um, it, it's, it's a piece, some people might call it shameless, but, but it, it would it would have been overall good publicity. I mean, even just from a, uh, a you, you know, a non general anyone um, reason like that but um, so uh, well, hold on yeah. because what you just mentioned there is kind of something that I've done I'm I'm not running for a paycheck here I'm running because uh, really it's a God thing for me is why I'm running for US House I'm married to a physician uh, my expenses in Florida taken care of so if I am elected at all my expenses after you know work related I'm donating back to my district to seed the funding of Habitat for Humanity homes for single parent families, qualifying of course, uh, with veterans at the top of the list because I'm trying to build community. And the other issue is we've got all these abandoned, foreclosed homes. They're sitting there vacant. They're drop. They're you know bringing the property values down. I want to work with these bankers and these real estate agents and the schools because the schools know. Uh, the homeless children, they, that's the, they, they track that, so we know what children are living, you know, in hotels or in cars. Or yeah, and some of these people should, you, you know, get their homes back and have a renegotiation. Yes, yeah, and, and, and you know, you've got all, it, it's a great time to buy real estate, and, and if the churches and temples and mosques and civic organizations would buy these homes, help these people get off, you know, off the street, get these children. Well, we ready did buy their these head. homes with the bailouts that we did. Yeah, I mean, one could argue, and um, so we should be able to do whatever we want with them. And well, I think it's a community thing. We can't look to the government to do these things because this is a social issues, and 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 it's it's up to the community. But but the government's got to uh, 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 enable it and and encourage it. So that's what I really want to do in in the in the. Well, team. yeah, and they have to have people like you who are gonna like. It, it's not just all you, you know. The, you have to have like good people actually in there as well who are going to be able to brainstorm these ideas and also give light to other good people thinking of uh, good ideas so like if you got in you you know you might hire a good staff that also brings up good ideas and then you you know or speak to other you know with other candidates and, and stuff like that it'll just spread um, okay. you, you know you'll definitely help um, you, you know good ideas and in solidarity um, that's the only way anything happens and that's right I, I, I told we agree with that. You have to surround yourself with good people and um, and and then let them do their thing. You know, and it can be done because there's. I think we Americans are so much better than what the media portrays us. They portray us as a bunch of ignoramuses. But I talk to a lot of people and they know what's going on, and you know they're very well informed. But by and large, we have got uh, so many that are content. To 
to not know. I call those the willfully ignorant, and I don't know what you can do about those. But uh, Just lead by example, maybe. Um, be compassionate, patient. Um, it, it is Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G, dot org. And Eileen, I just got... It's, Dude, really, just wrapping up here, just uh, two more questions. One will be is, um, you know, please mention anything if, 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 if we didn't cover an issue. But also, um, who's some of, um, you know, people that you've been thinking about lately, um, whether uh, uh, more celebrity-like or historical figures or just people nowadays or just um, more, um, you know, maybe more unknown people as of yet? Um, and, 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 and why is that? Why have they been in, in your thoughts um, recently and and then um and please let us know if also after that if there's any issues that, that we didn't cover that you'd like to um go over real quick well that that's a great question that you ask because i can answer it both with the same name mordecai Venunu, who uh 26 years ago took the pictures of israel's weapons of mass destruction facility he was a mid-level tech um and he was working there and uh he quit. He wandered around Europe. He ends up uh, in Sydney, Australia. He, he um, I should preface to say, he was born in an Orthodox Jewish home in Morocco, um, and the Zionists came and convinced his father to move to Israel, which they did in 1963. And, um, Anyway, long story short, Venunu had a crisis of conscience. He documents when he realizes he's just a cog manufacturing uh, nuclear weapons. Um, he, after he wanders into a social justice Anglican church in Sydney, Australia, starts talking to them about it. He ends up the, uh, getting baptized a Christian. Uh, a few weeks later, he meets a reporter from the London Sunday Times, tells the story, they develop the pictures. Venunu and the reporter go back to London as uh, Venunu ha has three days with a nuclear physicist who verifying his story. And uh, Venunu is then lured to Rome by the Mossad. He's kidnapped, he's drugged, shipped back to Israel, closed door trial, 18 years in jail. They let him out in uh, April 2004, but forbid him to speak to uh, foreigners, to leave the country. But of course, he has spoken to hundreds, if not thousands of people. I've written the book about his freedom of speech trial. Uh, to this day, Venunu is still waiting uh, for his right to leave, and because he did speak to media when he did get out of prison in 2004, charges were brought against him, and uh, they sent him back to jail for 78 days in 2010 to punish him. And uh, they still won't let this guy leave. And uh, in 1986, nuclear physicists concurred. Israel had already manufactured up to uh, 200 nuclear warheads at that time and uh, were beginning to work on thermonuclear technology. And uh, yet we never talk about Israel's weapons of mass destruction. And um, what Vanini told me, and uh, which every American really does need to know, was that when Kennedy was president, he tried to get Ben Gurion to open up the Demona, and Ben Gurion said, oh no, it's only for peace. When LBJ became president, uh, he sent two senators every year to uh, inspect, but before the senators got there, the Israelis would block up the stairwells and the elevators, so all they ever saw was the top floor, not the seven stories underground. And when Nixon became president, he stopped the charade and uh, just said, you know, we'll ignore it. And Obama uh, came out um, and uh, verified, uh, agreed he would keep uh, the uh, ambiguity going. And it's, it's uh, not ambiguity, it's nuclear deceptions. And everybody in the world knows Israel has got nuclear weapons, and uh, we Americans are, are we collude in their policies. And there would be no nuclear ambiguity if it weren't for U.S. policy. And there should be no nuclear weapons in the Middle East. We need a nuclear-free Middle East, nuclear-free world. Um, that's because every single nuclear reactor, uh, nuclear energy. Um, facility is potentially a bomb 
uh, factory. So we, we have to understand uh, the, how complicated this issue is and how our government has just so silenced um, you know, well, we, we, we do need up. to talk and have an open discussion and, and honest conversation constantly. And, and, and even if it, it pains us to do it, we I think it, it's, it's definitely worth doing. And um, I, Eileen, just in closing here, is I, you do got to go in, in a couple minutes here. Um, but uh, is there, you know, any words that you'd like to leave? And I would just say this to people. I mean, you, you know, if, if five people told five people who told five people about your campaign and um, you, you know your campaign for truth honesty and um, and, and, and common sense solutions um, then uh, you, you know you could win and this is a year where Congress does have a record um, historical low 10 percent approval rating um, <laughs> and uh, so I, I mean you're in prime position to be able to you know be the uh, representative for the fifth district of Florida uh, stranger things have happened, and uh, if it does happen, it, it's a God thing. And uh, you were great interviewer, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And you're right, if, if five people tell five people, and on and on, uh, uh, all all things good. Well, it's it's and again, it's uh, Eileen Fleming for um, dot org, and uh, and if you want to learn more, um, and uh, yeah, I couldn't wait. I could uh, to, to to see any Congress, and so Eileen, uh, please uh, stay online. I'll say goodbye to you real quick, but uh, thank you so much for your time, and um, and Godspeed with your uh, campaign, uh, November sixth, two thousand twelve. Thank Thanks. you.